Okay, what's going on boys? Norguides here. Welcome back to another video. Is there a new meta inside the game? Um, is there a way where players that are slower like Insinuate with Explosive can now outpace a Virgil van Dijk? We're going to go over that. We'll go over the changes and why the market has been rocked and uh, explain to you what players to use now and a secret where I suppose you can say this could be solved with just any player inside the game. So first of all, okay, credit first of all to I Am French. Uh, he shows a clip um, where you can see here where Insigne gets um, on the ball, gets well completely done, uh, does Virgil van Dijk. But this clip is actually very deceptive as well. Um, and this is why you might see a lot of players on the market. A lot of a lot of people who watch this video who don't understand FIFA will be like, Explosive is the one. And this is why we get into this problem where people say, you know, why is this better player better than this? Why is this influence? This because people don't really understand the whole truth. I'll go through the thread first and I'll explain to you the issues, what's been changing, the biggest difference. So first of all, there's a comparison of Insigne Explosive versus Lenthe. And you can see Insigne um, does completely beat Virgil van Dijk, but it doesn't really show the full picture. I'll go with that in a second. Then he shows another one, which is Berardi, um, which is on Controlled versus Rudiger, who's on Lenthe. And you can see, for example, like here, you can see Rudiger then gets taken as well, as you can see like that. And Barai does get through in. I'll be honest, if he actually meant that, that is a fantastic goal, by the way. Um, probably using cop camera angle to see that, by the way. But that is a very, very, very nice goal. If he, like That is legit world class what he did. Um, and then he has, for example, over here, he has uh, Explosive. And this is Neymar Explosive and Walker Lenthe. Now, don't forget... Neymar is the ball carrier, so in theory he should be slower um, than Walker. Now we don't know the exact sprint speeds. I mean, are they using a hunter? You know, is Walker here using I don't know, like a, an architect or, or guardian to get him lengthy? And um, and is Neymar I don't know using a hunter here? It doesn't really. We don't know the full picture. But what he has shown us is a stamina. Now the first one you can see a big, big major issue. And this is why I say when you look at these clips, you have to just take you know. Everything with a grain of salt, okay? Insigne, first of all, has less stamina than Virgil van Dijk, van Dijk. Much less stamina. But the second thing is, Insigne, if we look at Virgil van Dijk's base stats, right? Let's look at his base stats, right? He's got 91 sprint speed, which is more important. That's why I say sprint speed is the most important. That's why I still use Hunter and Shadow, because I still want that sprint speed. You can see with a Shadow, it becomes 99. So, in theory, if... You don't know, Van Dijk could have 99 here, but Insigne, more importantly, let's I don't know what Insigne this is, but let's assume it's this one. I'm not, I'm not going to assume it's the gold one. He's got 87 sprint speed only with a Hunter. Or oh, let's say a Shadow. Well, Hunter, obviously, same, same pace difference. He gets him to 95. But this is why I say this video is very deceptive. Now, the reason why, if you're actually a regular Neil Guys viewer, you would know the solution to this. In fact... Um, I want you to pause the video and say from a typical new, if you watch, if you actually watch my videos on a regular basis, what's the issue with this? And um, pause it now and let me know down below in the comment section. If you're still having some difficulty, I'll explain to you what the issue is here. Um, it's something that I always teach you and I'll give you a hint. It's Virgil van Dijk. What is he doing that's wrong here? And the thing is, is that this clip is very deceptive because this is an example of such bad defending with respect to the opponent and respect to the person that gave this this is an example of very very poor defending and this is why when these clips get posted on social media people don't who don't understand the game it's got one million views the market's been rocked now because everyone is buying these explosive players do you need to use explosive players everywhere no and i explained to you the reason why is because look virgil van dyke should be running this way towards goal but what he does is he curves his run like this up until he, um, he's already beaten and then he's running back up again like this whereas you can see he's a car I mean not a cardi sorry just instead of just running in, in a straight line do you see that so I'll give you an example you know John Stones let's say we had John Stones here he would probably be able to catch up in this situation this is why people say to me oh if this is Mbappe and this is John Stones how can John Stones catch up to Mbappe because it's all about angles if John Stones runs like this, Mbappe has to go all the way inside. John Stones with his, I don't know, what's he got? Six, 76 sprint speed, 70 sprint speed, I don't know if that. He will still catch up. But that's why players complain, oh, why does my, why does his defender or her defender with 50 pace catch up to my player with 99 sprint speed? 
it's because it's all about angles. In this example, would Virgil van Dijk have caught up before? If he was running the right way, yes. Would Virgil van Dijk be able to catch up now? I can't really tell exactly, but there is a 100% chance he would. Uh, if he's running in a straight line. If he's running like this, you can't really judge it. You can see he's always behind the play then. Even at this point, for example, when he's behind the ball, he actually loses pace while he tries to jostle his opponent as well. So, realistically, this clip is very deceptive. You can't rely on this clip, but you can see straight away that there is a better speed difference from what you can tell visually in explosive. But again, I need to test this before I give you my complete answer. But what I would say now is it's well balanced. Before lengthy was up here, you could argue, and controlled was down here. Now I would say it's well balanced. You know, you have, because explosive was basically redundant, but now explosive makes a difference. And then you have lengthy, so it really does tip the scales in either favor, but I'll say a perfect equilibrium, I'll be honest. They both help each other in different ways, and it's how it should be. But don't rush forward and thinking you have to buy all your players and to get them on explosive. Even with this one over here, you can see su it's such bad defending over here because you can see here, this player is already making a run in behind. And then at this point, for example, he's looking, I believe he's just running backwards. But then look, he runs up towards the ball. Where should he be running? He should be running only one direction. And that is, of course, he should be running this way. But you can see he gets taken by the initial explosive split. And you can see even at this point, look at that player. He's running like this and he is running like this and he's going to curve it straight. You see that? And then he gets taken. So yes, he does get taken. He tries to jostle for the ball, but it's deceptive because if you just ran in a, the left-hand side straight away, let's say around about nine o'clock, this whole situation would have been resolved. Or he could have just ran like that, but you can see he goes towards the ball. And you can see now this guy's left down lock stick is more like this as opposed to even there or where it should be is over here. That's where it should be. So you can see that he's completely defending the situation wrong. And that's why a lot of these clips, you can't judge the entire situ situation with. And this Neymar one, for example, it's the exact same thing. Now this comes again with, um, don't forget this is new gen as well, these explosive sprint types. But you can see, have a look. When Neymar gets the ball, he takes a touch forward. This is the R1 touch. And don't forget, um, there was the old last year explosive sprint that gave you a speed boost if you ran in a straight line. So this is taken into account. From my understanding, if I'm correct, He's running at a straight trajectory, so he also gets the last year's explosive sprint boost when you're running in a straight line. So that's the initial boost proved over here. And you can see again, Walker, just bad defending. No defender in it, well, a, a proper elite player, I want to say, is going to run like this. And even if Neymar's running like this, everyone is going to be running like this or somewhat be curving their run. They're not going to be running straight like that. And you can see this player just completely runs for the ball. And you can see here, it's the agility and balance of Walker that kicks in, the way he turns. That's why I went to fullbacks in FIFA 20. Not 21, 20 when it was meta and head didn't exist because the agility and balance is important. So that turn with Walker is what affected that. And then he was able to catch up. If, if he just ran like this, he was able to catch up. But you can see here that this player then decides to run towards the ball. You see that? He's running like this, not like that. And then you can see, then he tries to catch him up. And at that point, he's already caught him up. But you can see, watch over here what he does. He then reverts into a running jockey. And don't forget, with a running jockey, if we go over here to Walker, Walker's running jockey speed, <clears throat> um, and now they're both the same, his defensive awareness is 76. So his running jockey is going to be very slow. So you can see, that's how he gets caught up over here. He actually could have won the ball if he just played that better. So you can see how these, all these clips are very deceptive. Is explosive the meta? No, it's not the meta. Neither is lengthy. They're both well balanced. I told you, I still use Hunt and Shadow. I don't try to prioritize Architect. Would I prioritize explosive? Yes, I would, because the short bursts of pace are the most important thing, not the long bursts of pace. Maybe as a defender, you can argue it, but most times for the average player, it's better to have a higher sprint speed than force a player with an architect who doesn't naturally have one. So that, unless it's something like Virgil van Dijk, that's different. So that is these three clips explained. And as you can see over here with the stamina, with uh, with a um, Walker versus Neymar, they're very similar. Neymar, of course, ran a bit more further. But you can see it's all about angles. So 
This doesn't tell the full story, so before you jump and surge forward and think, you know, I'm sure everyone's explosive, it's not the meta. Um, it's all about angles. Just run to where the ball's going to be, as I've always taught you, not where the ball is. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to get better, you can come to my FIFA School series. Patreon.com forward slash nil. Guys, we actually started now the official FIFA School series. Uh, the first video was out yesterday, and uh, two of them actually, on taking a touch away to always keep the ball safe and passing basics, the core fundamentals for any FIFA. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, of course. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.